Hello everyone, welcome to your YouTube channel where we talk all about the GATE exam, we are studying operating system, the process management and the CPU scheduling algorithms. So the next algorithm we are understanding here is longest remaining time first, a sister or brother of shortest remaining time first, you can say like that. So the algorithm is longest remaining time first, LRTF. Just like we understand the shortest job first, who works on the shortest burst time to be scheduled first, there we can have the longest job first also, where we schedule the process who have the longest burst time. And as we have the preemptive implementation of shortest job first in the name of SRTF, shortest remaining time first, similarly for the longest job first, the preemptive implementation becomes the longest remaining time first. Alright, so we have the LRTF and we are going to understand this algorithm with the help of a question which was asked in GATE 2006. It was totally about the LRTF. Now, understand the criteria. As I said, longest job first to be again looking at it, nothing but then the burst time. So the criteria is the burst time and the mode of execution is preemptive. Whenever it comes the term remaining time, remaining means Whatever is left and whatever are new coming up, you have to make a comparison. So that simply means you are going to preempt the process, right? Without preempting a process, you will not look at the remaining time. You will just schedule it for a static mode and you will look for the next process, not from the previous process. So that remaining term makes it nothing but then the preemptive, correct? Now, the question simply says that we have a system where we have three processes P0, P1 and P2. Their respective arrival times are 0, 0, 0. So all the three processes are arriving at time 0. And their respective burst time requirement is 2, 4 and 8 units. So the question says we are implementing the longest remaining time first algorithm. And whenever the tie is there between two processes, it is broken by the lower process ID. So whichever process ID is lower will get the chance first if the tie is present. You have to find out the average turnaround time using this algorithm and these are the given options. Alright, so let's schedule the process based on LRTF and at the same time we will understand how this algorithm is actually implemented. So here is our GAN chart that we are going to design at the time zero your CPU status. So we are implementing the LRTF. So we have all the three process available at the same time 0, 0. So what we are going to do is at the because all the process are there in the ready queue, we will look at their burst time, whichever is the longer one will be scheduled first. And remember this is preemptive. So no matter you schedule this process first, this will be scheduled till it is the longest among all. There will be a time when this will not be longer or the longest any longer, right? Some other process will become either equal to its length or more than its length. So let's look at that. So I know that process 2 is right now the longer one. And I also know the other process which is smaller than this is 4. So this is, this is longer till it is 8, 7, 6, 5. But once its requirement becomes 4, it is going to be same as process 1 and the question is clearly mentioning that if you have tie you have to break the tie by the lower process id the preference should be given to the lower process id so let's look at here i schedule it till the time 4 and it becomes requirement 4 now i will look at my system once again and i will try to implement the algorithm which says 2 4 4 higher highest remaining time is 4 and 4 but which is the lower process id p1 so the chance will go actually to p1 correct now p1 will also not be given the complete four burst let's give it only single burst when i give it a single burst how much it becomes it becomes three now you see among two three four once again who becomes a longer process p2 so the chance again goes to P2. And this is the beauty of this algorithm that you always have to be careful. It's not like shortest job. Once we know that these all three are shortest and I pick this, I will simply schedule it for all the two bursts because I know till the end of it, it is all, it is the only one who is going to remain the shortest. But that is not the case with the longest. Once you schedule a process, because its burst time are getting consumed, the other process become longer in the due course. So that you have to always take care of. Correct. So it has become 4, 5, 6. Now P2 have been scheduled 
so now because we do have been scheduled for one more burst so it will become 3 correct correct now again 2 3 3 so we have 3 and the lower process id is p1 so p1 will get the chance and it will run again for the one so it will be coming from 3 to 2 next is process p2 i hope you are following it and it becomes again 7 to 8 and again it becomes from 3 to 2 right now you see again interesting we have three processes who have the same length 2 2 2 but the lowest process id is p0 so now we are going to get p0 right here which will be scheduled for one burst and it becomes one and the remaining becomes a longer so next goes p1 so i am going to continue the scheduling right here so we stopped at nine correct p0 was scheduled next is p1 again scheduled for one burst and it becomes one again then is p2 it becomes one correct now we have all the three process with single single burst requirement and we go by the process ids so p0 p1 and p2 and all get finished so it becomes 12 13 and 14 so this becomes 0 0 and 0 and this is how the scheduling gets finished from length 0 to 14 you can imagine this as a straight can chart so you have to be actually very careful when it is longest remaining time because every time a process gets scheduled it becomes smaller in its length and the other process becomes longer that's what you always have to take care of and you have to keep on switching the process with their respective burst time right now quickly find out the completion time because we have to find out the average turnaround time that's what the question is actually asking so for that matter i'll just clean this off and the completion time for each process and you see because all the processes are arriving at time zero whatever is the completion time is only the turnaround time so p0 is completing at the time 12 all right p3 p1 completing at 13 p2 completing at 14 and that's what become the turnaround this minus this so 12 13 and 14 so what is the average turnaround time just take a sum of it so 12 13 is uh, for 25 and 14 39 divide by 3 so that is nothing but then 13 burst right so the answer is straightforward option a 13 unit is the average turnaround time likewise if you want you can calculate the wait time also and you can find out the average wait time so i hope you can understand the logic behind the longest remaining time first algorithm and likewise if at all in exam in question if they make some other change in the algorithm or they put their own definition of the algorithm just try and understand what is the criteria and keep on looking at the arrivals and the burst time all the time so that you don't make in because it's not always certain that they are going to give question from the standard algorithm sometimes they make a little tweak in the existing algorithm and make a new one which you just have to pick at that moment of time and solve accordingly okay so i'll see you once again with the next algorithm till then bye bye take care